Hey everyone, April Dunham here. It's Tuesday, so you know what that means. I'm back here to show you another Power Platform template. This week, I'm going to show my training portal template. This Power App allows you to curate a list of training videos that your employees have to complete and assign tasks to complete those. As always, I'll walk you through how the app works and show a few learning points from the app. But first, here's the intro. So if we open up the Training Portal app, you'll see that we have a landing dashboard page where we can see featured training. So we see the name of the training, the length, and who's teaching it. Then below, you'll see that we have a task tab where we can see the current logged in users assigned task of training to complete. If the training's overdue, you'll see that it's highlighted in red. And if you still got time, it just shows the date, not highlighted in red. If we click the Discover tab, that gives a user a way to explore more different types of training that they can see here, and they can always click See All, which will take them to another screen where they can search and filter the types of training that they might want to watch. So as I click on one of these options, I can filter this down to just Power Platform training, for example, or Microsoft Teams training only, and it shows me the results here. And of course, I have the search box here so I can search for something specific that I'm looking for. On the task tab, that's where you'll see all of the different trainings that the current logged in user has to complete. We have the same filter here. So on all, I can see all of my tasks regardless whether I've completed them or not. If I did complete them, it will show me the date that I completed it. And if I haven't, it will show me when it was due. And I can filter these down to only show my pending task. Now I can click on any one of these. So for example, Intro to Power Automate. And that will take me to the training screen. This is where I can watch the training video itself, see the description about it, uh, the duration, the speaker, the category, and any additional resources as well. So if you have a corresponding PowerPoint deck or PDF document that goes along with this training for more information, that would show up right there. So it has an embedded player, so I can just watch this straight directly in the Power App. Then once I've completed this training, I can just select the mark as complete option. I can choose the checkbox to acknowledge that I completed this, fill in my name in the text box below, click complete assignment, and that will make this fall off of my task list. So you see the intro to Power Automate is off of there now that I've completed that. And if I go into my task list here and go to complete, you'll see that it was marked that I've completed that today. If I go back to the search screen and select one of these pieces of training, so how about this, so maybe this Power Apps branding one, let's select that. You'll see that we also have the ability to assign this particular training to users. So this is something that, again, you could customize further if you wanted. Right now I have it set to where anyone can go in and assign, but you can have this locked down to where only certain users can assign this. So maybe like a manager can only uh, select the assign option to assign this to their employees. Whatever your requirements are, you can modify this to your needs. But you can select first who you want to assign the training to. Uh, this is just a combo box that's pointing to the Office 365 users connector. So we can select multiple people that we'd like to assign this training to. And then define a due date of when they need to have this complete by. Click Assign, this will loop through all of that and create tasks for each of those users. So if I go back now to my task screen, I should see a new task for the Power Apps branding due on the 15th, which I do. So now I can just go in, see that, be taken to the training screen, watch the video, and then mark it as complete when I'm done. And you'll see this particular training does have one of those additional resources that I was talking about. So it has a corresponding PowerPoint that I can see here and I can click on it and it will open up that PowerPoint in a new tab for me, which was stored on SharePoint. And then finally, we do have the ability to add new training courses by clicking on the new tab. We can define the title, category, the length, 
so maybe 30 minutes. Um, the instructor, which will auto-populate to the current logged in user. And then you'll see some additional options where we can customize this particular template even more. So right now I kind of have it set up and I'm using it with the assumption that all of these trainings are going to be kind of on-demand uh, trainings, but we have fields in here for spots available and format. So if you wanted to do say an in-person training or some kind of live virtual training with limited number of spots, you could add in some additional logic to this to limit the number of spots and require registration for that. So that's what these additional fields are for. Uh, the video URL if this is an on-demand training is where you would put that in here. And then of course, a description. So with that, I'm just going to take the app into edit mode and we'll highlight a few things that we can learn from this particular template. One thing that I'll show is how you notice I have this hamburger icon that's expanding out a navigation on the left. So I'll take a look and show you how I handled that. The navigation item itself is done via a component. So you'll see that we have a component called left navigation that is just using a gallery to store a list of items. Those items are a table and it just has a title for the name of the link, the screen that it should go to and the icon it should show. So I've added that into each of my individual screens here. The hamburger icon on its on select is using a global variable called show left nav. And as we click it, it's going to toggle that to true or false. That's what this, if you look at the formula, you notice that I have an exclamation point and then I'm just putting in the name of my variable that I defined. So what that exclamation point is doing is it means each time that I click that, it's going to set it to the opposite of what it was before. So it's just a simple way to toggle Boolean values. So this will help us to show or hide then that navigation menu based off what this value is. So that variable is being set with that function. So now in my left nav control, if I go to its visible property, you see I'm just binding that to that variable so that if it's false, it'll be hidden. And if it's true, it'll show. The other thing you might've noticed is as I click that, the content that was here on the screen moves over and shifts to accommodate for that to the right. That's done by dynamically setting the X position of the objects on the screen. The X position is the position at which the content shows horizontally across the screen, so from left to right. So if we look at this featured gallery, for example, and go to its X property, you'll see that I'm looking to see if that show left nav variable is true, because then I know that this nav bar will be shown. So if it is true, then that means my X coordinate of this gallery should be higher at 158. But if it's not true, so the left nav isn't showing, then I want it to be 15. So I just repeated that for the elements on my screen, that same formula. You might have also noticed that below on the task in the discover, I'm using tabs. That's also done via a component that I've created. And again, the component is using the gallery approach. So I've created a gallery with just two simple objects, a label and a rectangle. So the rectangle is what's showing that underlying effect. So what I'm doing on the rectangle control is I'm keying off of a property called is selected. So I'm only showing the rectangle if this current gallery item is selected. I'll go to the search training screen next and we'll take a look at that. For this filtering option, I've added in a gallery and to get this look and feel of the kind of gray bar background, I've just set the color of the gallery itself to gray. And then within the gallery, I have a single control of a label. But you notice that I have different colors based off of if it's selected, it's highlighted in this lighter blue, but if it's not, it's a darker blue. So let's take a look at how we're doing that. If we click on the gallery itself, and go to the properties drop down, you'll see that there is a property called template fill. So what I'm doing is there's a property you can key off of called is selected, which will look at the gallery and see which item you have selected. So what I'm doing is I'm doing an if statement and saying if this item is selected, then I want to show a lighter blue, otherwise show a darker blue. So it's an easy way to get those different colors as you click on the items in your gallery. And this gallery is helping us filter our results below. So we have another gallery called gallery search results. 
and we're using the gallery above to filter this. So if we look at the items property of our gallery search results, you'll see we're keying off of our gallery filter categories and we're saying if the selected value equals all, and you'll see we're just doing a filter of our training list and we're using the starts with function so that we can search the title field in our list and get anything that matches what we're typing in in the search box. But if it doesn't equal all, meaning I selected another category, I want to filter the training where category equals whatever category I selected in our gallery. And to get this look and feel for this gallery, let's take a look at that for our gallery search results. The first thing that I'm doing is embedding a video control. So if we go to insert media, you'll see a video option. So this allows you to embed a video from a source like YouTube. So I've added one of those at the top. Below that, I've added a rectangle control with a white fill. And in that rectangle, I've just added some additional labels. So you see we have one label here that I'm pointing to, in this case, the title of the item in the gallery. I have a label below that's pointing to the length, an icon next to that, which is just a calendar icon, a label that's pointing to the instructor, and a person icon to kind of differentiate that. So it kind of gives you a nice little card effect by laying it out this way. And the last little bit that I wanted to show you from this template is on the all task screen. And I'll show you some conditional formatting that I use to show either the red box if something's overdue or show the completed date if it's already been completed. So for this, in this particular gallery, and looking at the styling here, Again, it's just using a rectangle, but in this case that doesn't have a fill, but has a pretty thick border that's white. So it's gonna give that kind of box planner-esque look. And we just have some labels in here. So if we look at this label, you'll see that its text property has a formula in it. So this is just one control, but if it's completed, you can see that I'm having it say completed on and then the date. But if it's not completed, it's just showing the date. So how I'm doing that is I'm keying off of the status. So I'm saying if status equals complete, then I want to show the text completed on and then pull in the completion date. Otherwise, just show the due date. And with these dates, you'll notice that I'm using a particular function to just extract the month and the day from the date fields in my SharePoint list. So if you just use the month formula and open and close that parenthesis, you can pass it in a date value and it will extract the month from that date. And same thing with the day function and there's also a year function that will extract each of those bits of information from a date for you. So that's how we handle the text that shows. But lastly, let's take a look at how we're getting that rectangle. So in the gallery, I've added a rectangle control. And if we take a look at the fill property, you see I'm checking to see if the due date is less than or equal to today and the status is not equal to complete. So you can do a not equals by doing the different alligator icons. So that's going to tell me that this item is in fact overdue. So I want that rectangle to be red. Otherwise, have it be transparent. That's one way that I could do it. Um, I did it this way because maybe down the line, if the items are done, I might want like a, a different color. Um, so I could easily change this to be green, for example, so that I know that they're complete and good or yellow if they're getting close to being done. Um, so that's why I did that this way rather than just setting the visibility of that rectangle to not show. So this just gives you more flexibility to have different color coding going on in the template. Those were the main things that I wanted to show you for this app. If you have any ideas for other templates that you'd like to see me incorporate into my Template Tuesday series, please use the comment section of my YouTube channel and drop me a note and I'd be happy to incorporate that. The link to download this template will be in the video notes. It will include a flow that will provision the underlying SharePoint list for you that you can run and it will deploy that. So all you have to do is import these and get up and going. Hope you found this helpful. If you did, please like, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.